Aloha, my name is Tasha Kama. I'm a Democrat running for the State House of Representatives for District 8, which encompasses the communities of Waikapu, Wailuku, Waiehu, Waihe'e, and Kahakuloa. We must remedy our reliance on imported goods and must think, behave, and act sustainably for the betterment of our island state. Hawaiians of old looked to the ocean which served as a refrigerator and the land was their cupboard, and they looked to the mountain streams as their faucet. There needs to be a paradigm shift to be able to meet our future needs, especially in times of natural or man-made disasters. We must take care of that which sustains us, for our whole existence depends on us, taking care of that which takes care of us. The first question that we have is in relation to civil unions. What's your position on civil unions? Should same-sex couples be granted the same rights and privileges as legally married couples? Every day in schools across Hawaii, our children with their hands on their heart recite, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And their education continues with the Declaration of Independence, which says, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These rights, unalienable, are inherent. No one can ever take these away. No one, not even the Creator Himself. It is the right of every human being to choose for him or herself. Civil unions are couples of the same gender in a relationship with each other who are asking for the same rights, privileges, and benefits as legally married couples. What is society's reasoning for not allowing this? On what basis do we withhold their liberty? Where is their justice? Are these couples not equal in status to everyone else? And finally, why are we prohibiting them from pursuing their happiness. The framers of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, after signing off, went on home and continued to be slave owners and traders. Have we not learned anything from our past? The next one is on transportation. The widening and realignment of the Honoa Pi'ilani Highway has been discussed for years, yet only a small portion is currently under construction. How long will it really take, and what alternatives do you envision to alleviate traffic concerns now? According to the State Department of Transportation's Highway Modernization Plan, it will take six years and $4.2 billion. The plan will focus on 183 projects in the four counties, of which Maui County has 36 projects that will cost $578,940,000 which is just a smidget over a half a billion dollars. Funding for the plan will be generated by increases in the fuel tax, state vehicle registration fee, vehicle weight tax, and rental car surcharges. This increased revenue stream will generate $2 billion over six years, added that to the $1 billion highway budget and the $500 million federal stimulus bill, the $4 billion price tag will be met. So, fuel tax now is 17 cents, it will be 27 cents per gallon. Annual revenue of $51 million on that tax alone. Vehicle weight taxes are three quarter of a cent per pound for vehicles up to 4,000 pounds. That would be raised to two and three quarter cents per pound, generating $68 million. Motor vehicle registration fees would go from $25 to $45, this would generate $23.3 million. Rental surcharges from uh, rental cars from $3 to $5 a day for an additional $32 million annually. Impact to us taxpayers, $170 per year. Now, the Honopi Ilani Highway Widening Project will cost $4 million. Lahaina Bypass, $48 million. Lahaina Bypass Phase 1B, $58 million and the Lahaina Bypass Phase 1C, the Ke'ave Extension to the Ka'anapali Connector, $69 million. A total of $179 million for this project alone. 
For the protection of natural resources and water, the State Commission on Water Resource Management recently issued rulings on streams in East Maui and at Navai Eha in the West Maui Mountains. Are the new in-stream flow standards sufficient or will they ultimately hurt the struggling sugar industry? If the issue is to save the natural resources, then the answer is no. The new in-stream standards are insufficient. If the issue is to save the sugar industry, well, according to Wailuku Sugar Company, then the answer is yes, because the water is critical to the survival of HCNS. So I see that there are two issues here, the preservation of our natural resources or the preservation of HCNS. June 13th, 2010, Maui News quotes Isaac Moriwaki as saying, the Supreme Court ruling clearly stated that the health of the streams must take priority over economics. And as stated in my opening statement, we live in an island state and must make every effort to protect our natural resources for the purposes of sustaining our future generations and beyond. We must take care of that which sustains all of us, for our whole existence depends on taking care of that which takes care of us. On the topic of education, what do you plan to do to prevent a repeat of the Furlough Friday situation at public schools? The Furlough Fridays were instituted by our governor to balance the state's budget, and we had a $688 million shortfall. So I want to read an article uh, from the Hawaii Press. It came out Wednesday, March 17, 2010. It says, Hawaii Free Press and others have over the past few months identified millions of dollars of waste, fraud, and corruption in the DOE budget. $50 million for software when equivalents were available free of charge. Up to $75 million of federal funds lost to schools because the HSTA, DOE, and BOE sabotaged Hawaii's race to the top funding application. Between $42 million and $57 million burned on wasteful personnel practices. A Hawaii state audit identified $21 million in waste on one DOE contract alone, as well as $1.1 million burned on crony contracting and $2.8 million diverted from classroom salaries to fund more crony contacting. Add it all up, the total is between $191.9 million and 206.9 million, and these are just minimum figures. The DOE procurement audit sampled only a portion of total of the DOE procurement contracts in order to illustrate how business is done. Thus, the total could easily be 10 times what the audit found, adding another 224.1 million in annual DOE waste, fraud, and corruption. This produces a grand total of 416 to $431 million in annual DOE waste, fraud, and corruption out of the total budget of $2.1 million. So the DOE procurement budget is about $800 million of this. I want to urge everyone to go and look at this article by Andrew Walden in the Hawaii Free Press. I think that um, the way to have, to, to never ever allow this is to be able to have an audit on the Department of Education and see where all the waste is at and where all the fraud is coming from and the corruption. If this is what's happening in one state agency. I'd like to see what's happening in the other state agencies. And finally, any closing thoughts? This is your opportunity to touch upon maybe something that I didn't ask or just give some contact information for your campaign. I believe that the people in District 8 are looking for a responsible government that will be open, transparent, accessible, and ethical. They need a leader they can believe in, is decisive and resolute. My role as your representative is to govern the affairs of our state for the well-being of its citizens and to work cooperatively with others to bring forth positive resolutions. I humbly ask for your very important one vote in this primary election on Saturday, September 18th. Again, I'm Tasha Kama, running for the State House of Representatives. You can reach me at www.tashakama.org, my website. Again, mahalo, and please vote, and vote for Tasha Kama. <laughs>